Hi all. We're going to do some more Oracle. Uh, I've got this uh, text file here. I like to follow these because it, it keeps me on track. I don't lose track of what I'm doing. So uh, We'll start with uh, doing a little bit with the command line. And then next video, we'll work with the GUI a little bit. I think uh, doing it with the command line, it might be a little harder to understand what's going on right now. But I think after you understand what a table is and things like that, then when we work with the GUI, it'll make more sense. Because if we get into doing these uh, database commands inside the GUI, it might be a little harder to see what's happening. So, okay. So last time we put the uh, shortcut on the taskbar here but you can also start it here go to all apps Oracle and then here's the uh, SQL command line We can go in and change the color. You can say screen background. Screen background. White. Text. Okay, that might be a little easier to see on the screen. Font, you can make the font a, a little bigger. That's a personal preference how you like to work, but I just thought it would be easier for you to see in the video if we did it like this. Okay, so you know, we started this up. Now we aren't logged in. The database is running in the background. Right, if we go to the taskbar we can see Oracle is already running. You start your computer, it's already there. You don't have to start it like you would Word or PowerPoint. You know, uh, you know, it's already running. That's the when you installed it. That's the way Oracle set it up. You know, as soon as you turn on your computer, Oracle's already running in the background. You can change that if, if you want, but. I don't really think it's necessary. Uh, we'll go over it later, show you how to turn it off on. So first we have to, it's running, but we aren't connected to it. So then we have to do a connect command. And what do we want to connect as? You know, what user? What user account do we want to log in with? We'll say login with the system account. System is just Oracle's version of the administrator account. And then enter in the 
password that's the password that you entered when you installed Oracle so I typed it in but you can't see it there they, they don't uh, display it hit enter we're connected to the database okay so first thing we have to do is create a table this is the same one we went over in the first video but I thought we'd go over it again and uh, in the first video I had this brace down here so it, it could be all on one line if you want it to be but they only break things up to make it more human readable uh, usually four indents is common yeah. but but again that's a personal preference uh, a lot of times these days you'll see this brace up top here and that's just to uh, save space on the piece of paper you know that you're typing code into you know, it makes it a little harder to see what's going on when that brace is up top you know if you put this brace down below it it's a little easier to see that this brace goes with that brace uh, it's not so bad here but you know you get a bunch of this stuff on one page then it might be a little harder to see uh, when I first learned this stuff I would always take these things and set it up like this so I could study it it's a lot easier to study we're creating a table table is just like a spreadsheet you know you got columns columns go up and down like the uh, big cement columns on a Greek building Col columns go up and down so this would be the first column this would be the second column this would be the third column this would be the fourth column they're separated by commas uh, this column is what is the ID number you know, is it ID number one, ID number two, you know, you know uh, ID number, like uh, when you go to work, they give you an, an ID number. The item column is just the name of the item. What are we selling? Pliers, saws, drills, ladders, you know, the, the name of the item what's the item cost you know does, does it cost a dollar or two dollars you know uh, how many do we have in stock do we have one in stock do we have two in stock you know? so it's just a simple table that I created just to show you how this stuff works okay now there's different things going on after the column name uh, there's all different types of things that you can add to these uh, usually you, you don't have to add a lot you know usually one or two things is all you really need you know. some important things you may need to add more uh, there may be all kinds of options that you see in the books most of them you never need you know you might need them once in your life or one time in a table or one time in a database you know. but uh, they have to have all those options available in case you ever need it so don't let it overwhelm you you know if you're looking at a whole page of different options you know it can really become overwhelming you know. okay so as far as I know on earth 
we only have numbers and characters, right? Yeah. You put something on a piece of paper, it can only be a number or a character, okay? So that's what's going on here. We either have numbers or we have characters. Uh, there's all different types of categories inside there. So here, this one is just a straight number. This one is a character, but they call it a variable character. They just give it a fancy name. Yeah. This one is also a number, but we can add decimal points to it. You know, like for storing cash, you know, what's the cost? You know, fifteen ninety nine, nine ninety nine, and then this is also just a plain old number. Uh, there's many more different types. You'll see them written in the books as a data type, D A T A type. What data type is the column? You know, the ID column is a data type of number. The item column is a data type of variable character. The cost column is a data type of decimal numbers. Okay, so, and then after that, we have these numbers here. These are just random things that I pulled out. Uh, so like here, the ID number can be no b bigger than five spaces. If we wanted to, we could say a num the ID number could be n no more than two. So then we could only go up to... 99 if we if we wanted to enter in a, a hundred it wouldn't take it because a hundred would be three spaces okay uh, characters would, would be 10 we can enter in 10 characters uh, 10 wouldn't be a lot if you had a long item name. Let's say you wanted to enter in the word uh, uh, 40 foot step ladder. Well, that wouldn't fit because that's longer than 10 characters. So. Uh, here, we're saying we're going to enter in a, a decimal point, a nine total, with two decimal points. Two decimal points for cash, right? Zero, one for a penny, you know, point ninety-nine for ninety-nine cents. You know. And in stock, we could have up to five. Don't worry about the, the details here. It's not really that big of a deal. I just want you to see how you use a create table command. So we create a table and we name it products. Okay. This term here could be anything. Yeah. These two would have to be exact. There's all types of things that you can create. We're going to create a table. And we're going to name it products. What products do we sell? And then we open it and we close it here. No comma after the last one. Even if one little comma or one brace or something is out of place, you'll get an error message. 
So if we wanted to run this command, instead of having you watch me type this stuff in, I'll, I'm just going to cut and paste here. I'll, I'll copy it. Go over here and paste. Hit enter. Okay, now see we got an 8 here, right? We got line number 8. Yeah. Line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4. Here we got line 8. We can enter in a uh, semicolon or a forward slash. Forward slash just means run the command. You know, this line 1 through 7, that's the command we're going to run. We're going to run a create table command. Okay, so this is nice that it says it worked. Table created. Lots of times on, on systems, if things work, they don't give you any message down here. So it's nice that Oracle put this, that table was created. Okay. Uh, this here, I just put this down here. So after we created the table, we could go in and see it. See how it's actually in the system. Uh, sometimes on uh, some systems I noticed uh, if you right click here it won't paste that text in. What you have to do is click on this little guy here and go down to edit and paste. If I wanted to, I could just put a semicolon here. This is describing the products table. What we created up top. Okay, so it says the name of the column is ID number, and it's a number, and it could, it could have two places the item column, variable character, hold up to 10 characters, and so on. So this stuff here, that's just like the structure of the table, you know, how it's being built. Uh, a fancy word for all this is the metadata, M-E-T-A-D-A-T-A. -A -A. That just means the structure of the table. Okay, so we created a table, and then we went back and we looked at it just to make sure it was created. You don't always have to go back and look at the structure, but I'm just doing that as an example to show you how it works. And now we have to put data into it. We have to put stuff into it. What items do we sell? We sell hammers and saws and screwdrivers and so on. So these lines here are kind of tricky. So let's just look at this one. It says insert into the products table. That's the table that we just created here. These values. So here we have to list it in the order of the columns. Right? We have to tell the computer where to put the information. Right? So the the order of the columns are ID number, item, cost, in stock. Same order here. ID, item, cost, in stock. And they're separated by commas. And then here, these items have to be in the same order as these items. See, this ID number would go into this one. 
the name of the item would go into this one. The cost of the item goes into this one. And how many we have in stock go in this one. So these have to match. So you can see we insert into the products table these values. Then you can see I have these set up with the uh, forward slash. That's just to help us insert these. So we insert values. Forward slash means run. Okay. So it shows us one row was created. It, if we wanted to, we could go in and run this select command and see it. This just means select, star means everything. That's a real common item in database. Select all from the products table. So there's the item that we just inserted. One goes here hammer goes here 999 goes here and uh, we have a hundred of them here okay we'll do a lot more with these select commands that's uh, the main thing when it comes to the database stuff is knowing how to create the select commands Uh, next we can insert some more data I, we have what one two three four five yeah. if, if we wanted to we could select all these at the same time it's just a time-saving thing we could use the arrow keys to go through our history and there's our select command here and here's the items that we just inserted see here we inserted a screwdriver players drill screwdrivers players drill If we wanted to, we can always insert and delete items. So we'll insert another drill. We can uh, use use our uh, arrow keys to go back to the select command. You see now we have two drills. So there's ways that you can set up your tables avoid this type of thing you know, sometimes you want it to happen sometimes you don't you know usually with the ID numbers you only want one number so we'll do that in the other videos show you how to cl clean up your tables okay so I, th I think that's pretty much will it for the second video uh, the tough part would be understanding the data types we'll add more data types as we go uh, these items are tough there's nothing easy about that command at all you know. See how th these had to be in the uh, the uh, quotes, single quotes. Select commands are usually are pretty standard. You know, if they work on this database, they'll work on the next. You know, there might be small changes here and there, but uh, 
Okay, and then we'll go ahead and drop the table. We created it, and then we'll we'll erase it. There's online books that you can go out and read. Like if we go to oracle.com and go to downloads and go right back to the same place where we downloaded the uh, Oracle database. You can see here, this second tab here, that's the uh, online books. You can download all of them or just parts. Like here's the uh, SQL, here's the administration guide, here's everything. But let's start with the administration guide here. We can read it online. Or if we want to, we can download it. And then here's saying download the PDF. Uh, here's some other different types. But here we'll... Uh, downloading the PDF is probably the most common one. You can see it opened right up in a Adobe Reader. It's a 164 page book and uh, if I wanted to I could just save a link to this. What I like to do is uh, click this guy here, it, uh, the one with the down arrow, it, it downloads it to your desktop. Save the file here, click OK. It's going to uh, be downloaded to your desktop here. It's a small file so it, it won't take long. And you can see we have this file here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and rename this so I can remember what that is. Okay, then we can, you can see here, I already have Adobe Reader installed. Uh, if you don't have that installed, what you can do is go to adobe.com. Uh, Adobe is one of the big companies in the computer world. You know, it's Microsoft and Adobe, you know. And, uh, Click on the menu, and then, let's see here, right here, the Adobe Reader. Just click here to install it. Uh, I usually uncheck this. This is just a free security scanner. When you download a PDF, it'll scan it for viruses. I usually don't bother, but uh, y you may like that. So. so that's all there really is to it. If we just click this to install. I already have it installed, so I don't know what it's gonna do here. Okay, save the file. Save the installer here. So it saved this guy here. That's not the actual file. That's just a small program that you download to help you install it. 
So you just click click that. User account control, click yes. I don't see how a newer version could al already be installed, right? <laughs> okay, well, I guess I got the scanner now. Okay, and click finish. Okay, so now uh, I know I have the Adobe Reader in installed. So you can tell it's installed when you download a PDF. It'll have this little red icon on it. Uh, Microsoft has a PDF reader in Windows 10. So if we go open with see this would be Microsoft's version of the uh, the Adobe reader. But you see, see, I'm not real fond of it. This is like taking forever. So if you don't want to install, okay. So see, and then if you don't want to install the Adobe Reader, you can use the Microsoft one. I'm just using my uh, mouse wheel to go through the pages. But what I found is the arrows over here don't work. So uh, you can make it bigger here, smaller. Okay, but I prefer to use the Adobe Reader mainly because I, I use these arrows a lot. You know, to go down to the next page. Uh, this would be the table of contents. Lots of things I've seen, they start to write out how to create another user account. Uh, we, we just jumped right in and we're using the system account. Yeah. I prefer to do it that way because I didn't want to, I didn't want to cloud the matter. I wanted you to see how the database works. So we'll come back later and create some user accounts. It's really not that big of a deal, so. But that's more of an administration thing. Lots of videos I've seen online and lots of the books. It's uh, more of a database administration. See, there's database administration, right? And then there's database programming. So, to be a programmer, you, you have to know a little bit about the administration because you got to know where your database files are going. To be an administrator, you have to know a little bit about the programming because you got to understand what your programmers are doing on your database. So. But I think it would be real hard mm -hmm. to be good at both. Yeah. I'm sure there's people out there that are good at both but they've been doing it a long time so uh, as we get going with these videos we'll do a little bit of both because you're running oracle on your desktop computer or your laptop so you have to know a little bit about the, the administration to set it up and see where the files are and things like that so we won't totally ignore the administration stuff, but I'm mainly going after the programming end. 
you can see that uh, I named these database SQL programming and what Oracle does is they took SQL and they added PL to it so just SQL is like a generic type of thing for database programming and then PL would be like a superset they add to it a subset would be like you take SQL and you only use part of it you know, you're not going to use all of it you know where PL SQL would be a superset they add to it you know, they take SQL and they make it better they make it work with Oracle databases Microsoft does the same thing they call it TSQL you know instead of a PL they just put a T here a, a T standing for transact SQL you know your transactions a transaction meaning let's say you swipe your credit card right it goes to a company that enters the information in a database okay it goes through a couple of different steps I just wanted to make you aware of the different types of SQL you know there's a generic not really a generic it's more or less a standard you know, the, the SQL standard and then each company changes things up a little bit you know this uh, one more here this is an older link that uh, I used to go to PDFs here here's one for PL SQL if I wanted to download it let's see here PL SQL let's see I'm gonna grab this name here and click PDF this is an older one but uh, stuff really hasn't changed much so. And I'm going to go ahead and put the year on there to 2002. Okay, so I think we'll stop there. See you next time. Bye.